This instructional video is designed to introduce the concept of orthonormalization and provide an example of what that would look like. So orthonormalization simply means that we have something that has two properties. Uh, the function we're talking about will be orthogonal and it will be normalized. And so our two parts then require us to do two different things. In the case of orthogonality, the idea is we can set up an integral over space and the index on the two parts will be different. So if i and j are not equal, then this integral will need to be zero. In the case of something being normalized, when we integrate over all space and we have identical indices, this will need to be one. So the thing that we have to do for orthogonal, we want to prove this is true. Normalization, this is something that we have to show to be true. And so this will result in different setups depending on the specifics of the wave function and what we mean by all space. In this case, what we simply mean is it's the range of each variable. If you only have one variable, then it's a single interval. If you have three variables, it's a triple interval. D tau is a typical volume element that's determined by the differential for the system itself. Depending on whether you have polar coordinates or uh, spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, Cartesians, what have you, that's going to change in form. So let's simplify our lives by doing the particle in the ring. In the case of the particle in the wing, ring, the wave function takes this form, a e to the plus or minus i k theta. And because theta is the variable, this gives us polar coordinates. And the thing that we have to keep track of is that all space then is defined as theta completing a full circle from 0 to 2 pi. And our differential for integration is r d theta. So now we have everything we need in order to prove orthogonality and show normalization. In the case here, we can substitute in, knowing that we integrate from 0 to 2 pi. And we're going to have a e to the minus plus i k theta. And because we want to show orthogonality, we're going to use something other than k for the second one. So the second one will be a e to the plus or minus i m theta. This is r d theta. So at this point, we have to do a little bit of awful algebra. And we want to try to prove that this whole thing is going to be 0. So what I'm going to do is pull out the a squared. Integral remains from 0 to 2 pi. I can also pull out the r. And what I'm left with then is e. And I have to combine these guys. So we're going to have plus or minus i m minus k theta d theta. So the calculus argument that we have to make here is that these two things are integers, therefore their difference is an integer. And by design, the function is going to be identical at theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi. 
So we'll use n as so it's the same at theta equals zero and theta equals two pi. So once we take the integral and apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, this entire thing is equal to zero. So that suffices as a proof that when we execute this integral and solve it for the specifics of the system, the whole thing becomes zero. The next part then is to show that this result will give us something that's normalized. So I can use the same setup, skipping a couple steps, a squared r pulls out, and I'm going to have e to the plus or minus i k minus k theta d theta. Well, this is zero, e to the zero is just one, so I'm integrating from zero to two pi, just d theta by itself, so that becomes a squared r 2 pi minus 0. And so the value of this integral then is a squared r times 2 pi. And at this point, the thing that we need to do is figure out how to make this equal to 1. The thing we can do to make this equal to 1 is to make this argument that a squared must be equal to 1 over r times 2 pi. At this point, we just take the square root. And so a is going to be square root of 1 over, and I'll just rewrite this as 2 pi r. So as a result, the answer from the calculus over here is enough to prove that the entire integral is going to be 0 when the indices are different. That gives us orthogonality. And this value of A is enough to show that this integral will result in a value of 1, which is what we need for normalization.